Hi everyone, Stepan here. Today I'll continue the series on the modern defense with the Averbach system, uh, which is a very interesting way for white to play against the modern because it it's very versatile and it often leaves black on the back foot not knowing what to do and getting out of the mainline modern defense theory. Obviously uh, the, the line is very similar to the King's Indian defense, so many uh, positions are going to transpose and that makes the Averbach system very uh, very tricky for black to face and uh, often players who, who play the modern defense even though they should be aren't well versed in the King's Indian. So. The Averbach system might be uh, a good system for d4 players who, when they see that their opponent plays 1g6, could force him into the King's Indian, which they know well and their opponent doesn't. So you might use this as, a, as an ace up your sleeve to, to trick your opponents. Uh, the opening starts after pawn to e4, pawn to g6, the modern defense, d4 bishop to g7, and now white plays the move c4, and obviously this is the the advanced pawn structure which you would often get out of the king's indian defense with a slightly different move order and once black plays d6 white continues with knight to c3 and this is now the Averbach system uh, the eco code is a41 as opposed to most modern defenses where it's b06 uh, because it often leads to the king's indian and here black has uh, four main moves two of which lead to the king's indian two of which don't and uh, black also has two sidelines which uh, which i'm going to cover briefly uh, first of all the main move in this position is knight to f6 and this is now the normal variation of the king's indian this uh, this opening is going to be covered in the d4 series in the king's indian defense series so i'm not going to go too much into this obviously this is not the modern defense anymore and the second move that leads to the king's indian is in this position where black plays knight to d7 after knight to d7 uh, knight to f3 is the main move and now e5 uh, and after bishop to e2 uh, knight g to f6 uh, castles castles you have now transposed to the orthodox variation of the king's indian and uh, with a slightly different move order, you once again have a d4 opening. So once again, this is going to be covered in the in the d4 series within the King's Indian series. And uh, what I mentioned at the start of the video, uh, this move order might be very tricky for black to face because most players who play the modern defense uh, are obviously going to be prepared for uh, peered structures and King's Indian structures but the slight difference in the move order might confuse them and you might enter the mainline main main mainline theory of the King's Indian without them being aware of that obviously against stronger player players is not going to work but it might be a nice trick so d4 bishop g7 c4 d6 knight c3 if black continues with knight to f6 it's the normal king's indian and after knight to d7 you're going to enter the orthodox king's indian if black doesn't play these moves e5 knight g to f6 and castles then he's going to be slightly worse so there's basically nothing better for black to do so these two moves we aren't going to go too much in depth in uh, the next two moves I wanted to cover after d6, knight to c3 are two sidelines which are not very popular uh, in the Averbach system and often you might confuse uh, players who play the modern with this move order because uh, you are aware that the main break, break in the modern defense is the move c5. Once again, if you haven't seen the introductory video on the modern, please do uh, to grasp the basics. So c5 is a very common idea as well as e5 e5 most often leads to the king's indian defense positions and c5 will often lead to benoni type positions so the two sidelines which i wanted to talk about briefly are c5 which i don't believe is good in this position because of d5 and now as we saw in some previous variations black's only pawn break is e6 and after e6 knight f3 ed5 cd5 you now have the benoni pawn structure and you have transposed to the benoni which if black doesn't know what he's doing this is bad if he knows what he's doing then it's also not that good obviously black has one trump in this position and that's the queenside pawn majority which is going to be very good if the pieces get traded off but black is a far far away from trading off all the pieces and uh, in the meantime white has a simple plan of knight d2 knight c4 knight b5 putting pressure on the d6 weakness and uh, simply winning a pawn 
And obviously, in the Benoni, there are theoretical ways to avoid losing that pawn. But as I said, if you play the modern defense, then you probably aren't the master of the Benoni, and this is going to confuse you. So, in order to avoid that, after knight to c3, I would recommend that you don't play the move c5, because you will get uh, an unfavorable Benoni structure. Uh, the similar thing goes for the move c6, which sort of leads to Morozzi bind positions. Uh, bishop to e3, knight f6, f3, and now even though the pawn is still on d4, uh, even though the pawn is still on d4, white has created this very strong center in which the f1 light squared bishop is the only deficit because it's locked down behind its own pawns. But I think white has a, a much better chance of attacking, and white can castle both sides, obviously. It's better to castle king side, but it's fairly easy for white to continue. a6 by black preparing the move b5, bishop d3, b5, knight g2, e2, castles, castles, knight bd7, cb5, ab5, b4, white is trying to lock down the king side pawn avalanche and I, I think this position is just pleasant for white it's it's not that it's bad for black but I think that this pawn center is uh, much better than what black has here and black is either going to have to play for e5 or for c5 c5 is very hard to pull through e5 is not that clear because black can go d5 and weakening weakening b5 obviously so I wouldn't recommend after knight to c3 that you play c6 or c5 and they are not the main lines for a reason. I just wanted to cover them briefly because in the modern defense those are very thematic moves and your opponents might be tempted to play them. So remember that if c5 is played you play d5 and if black doesn't play e6 then it's going to be really hard to activate his pieces. If he does then you have a Benoni pawn structure and if your opponent plays c6 then you go for a setup with uh, f3 and castling short or castling long. If you feel very aggressive, then castle long and try to be better than black. So I wouldn't go uh, too much into these two anymore. Uh, the next variation I wanted to cover is after the move knight to c3, uh, where black plays knight to c6. This is the cut of variation. And uh, this line is going to be fairly similar to the main line with pawn to e5, with the difference of white developing his bishop to e3. And now, uh, in the normal e5 lines, which we're, we are going to see in a minute, uh, black often wants to develop his bishop to g5, provoking the move f6, because black plays e5. And in this position, after bishop to d3, uh, he obviously doesn't want to lose another tempo, so this is quite different. Another way white can play, which I think is better, uh, is simply forcing the knight away. And this slightly resembles the Nimcovic defense, because the knight goes for a walk uh, all over the board. And the move here, after knight to c6, which I would recommend for the players with white pieces, is d5. After d5, uh, the knight has only one good square, basically, that's knight to e5, and now you continue with f4. All of your pawns are sufficiently defended, so now this is some weird uh, Alyokin defense something uh, where the black knight is moving around the board and white is expanding in the center. Obviously your pawns could prove to be a liability if black manages to activate all of his pieces, but as you are taking up central space then it's really hard to, for black to activate, especially after the move knight to d7, which is the only move here. You can see that white has a huge uh, space advantage and that white stands better. Knight f3, knight c5, trying to, well, trying to activate his piece and open up his bishop. Uh, bishop to d3, white offers this trade, uh, the black's most active piece for white's inactive piece, locked down behind this pawn chain. And the best move for black is actually to take, because the move b4 could come... Uh, could come in a minute if black doesn't do anything, so knight d3, queen d3, knight f6, castles. I just love this position for white. Uh, it's clear that you are going to play the move e5, it's clear that the f6 knight is going to have to move as well. One nice plan that uh, I have played myself is e5, d5, uh, fe5, the knight moving somewhere, usually the knight goes to d7 and then back to c5, but then you have b4, and then you play bishop to e3, queen to d2, exchange this bishop, h4, h5, and win the position. So I think this is fairly easy for, for white to play. Uh, so after knight c3, the upper back system, knight c6 could be punished uh, with the move d5. Of course, the position isn't losing for black, but it's much easier to play for white, and why would you want to move your knight around the board if you don't have to? Uh, the main move, however, after knight c6 isn't d5, uh, it's bishop to e3, and black now grasps the chance to play e5, d5, 
knight c to e7 and here you can choose between g4 and c5 uh, once again the the advantage of the move bishop to e3 allowing the move e5 is that black's bishop on g7 doesn't have that much space and uh, i think playing against this bishop is a very good plan against the modern and black is going to have to figure something out obviously black wants to play the move f5 get a sort of king's indian pawn break so one of the moves is designed to stop that the move g4 uh, the other move c5 is simply searching for white's pawn break if you remember what i was talking about in the last video on on pawn structures uh, you want to look for a pawn break where your pawn chain ends at the tip of your pawn chain lies your pawn break so for white it's obviously the move c5 and for black it's obviously the move f5 and uh, both sides are going to want to stop that obviously uh, a useful move for black would be six a use would be b6 a useful move for white would be the move g4 and uh, white can either choose to play his break here or to stop black's break so g4 is one of the moves after which f5 comes anyway gf5 gf5 in most king's indian pawn structures black is going to recapture with the g pawn and now white has the option of playing queen h5 check uh, covering with the knight isn't good uh, the much better is to play king to f8 and after bishop to h3 knight f6 the position goes on it's it's uncomfortable for black at least uh, and i really don't like these positions so the coat of variation as well uh, I, th I think is inferior for black and i think that white stands better or at least that white has a much easier game so after knight c3 beware of the move knight c6 and uh, be careful playing it i mean it's it, it's a very tricky move for black to play because you need to know tons of theory and you need to be prepared for both e3 and then the moves g4 or c5 or you need to be prepared for the move immediate d5 so after bishop e3 e5 d5 knight c7 white doesn't have to waste the tempo on g4 white can play c5 and allow f5 and now both sides are trying to break up the position as soon as possible i think the g4 is slightly better uh, because you can get c5 in anyway and trading this pawn for this pawn might be an okay idea i mean both sides are going to have a kingside attack but in any case knight c6 is i, I would say a slightly dubious move even though the engines understand it I don't think humans do as well and it should be avoided you should basically play um, positions which are easy to play you don't want to make your life harder uh, the main move uh, in the Averbach system let's just go over the opening moves once again e4 g6 d4 bishop g7 we've been looking at the three pawns attack we've been looking at the bishop attack so far and uh, with the move c4 going into the Averbach system white is uh, creating a sort of king's indian pawn, uh, pawn structure in the center preparing to play either d5 or e5 in some positions and uh, trying to have more space in the center black continues with d6 the only logical move knight to c3 and now black's uh, most common continuation and the best continuation is the move e5 i mean why not play e5 knight f6 obviously leads to the king's indian knight c6 we saw isn't that good knight d7 leads to the king's indian c6 and c5 are slightly inactive and e5 is the is the best move by far now you might be wondering what about the queen exchange that, that's actually an end game in which black stands fine if white goes for d5 black is going to recapture with the with the pawn if he recaptures with the bishop then f4 is coming and you are losing space so d5 queen takes queen, king takes this is an okay end game for for black you have an outpost on d4 which you could use easily this is one of black's uh, main trumps in the position i would recommend the maneuver such as knight to c6 knight to d4 knight to e7 knight to c6 looking at d4 and you basically want to get all of your pieces looking at this square uh, if you manage to control this square uh, you are going to have a strong piece in the center and another thing is that in these moroxy bind structures where white has pawns on c4 and d4 the bishop is not that good so this end game is actually good for black the fact that the king is stuck in the center doesn't really matter because there are no queens on the board and white is a long way away from creating any attacking attacking chances uh, conversely uh, looking at the d4 square as an outpost black always has the option of playing c6 thus not leaving white the option of entering d5 so i think that this this position is fi fine for black so after the movie 5 taking on e5 really isn't good for white and even though the engines think the position is slightly better for white i think it's hard to play so once again i wouldn't recommend making your life harder 
Uh, two main moves here are knight f3 or d5. Let's look at d5 first. d5 basically plays against the, the bishop and black once again wants to find the pawn break at the tip of his pawn chain, so f5 immediately should be played. Uh, you are once again in, in the king's Indian pawn structure position. Uh, black should play f5. Another move black can play is knight d7, uh, but after bishop to d3, I don't think black is fast enough and obviously black is stopping the c5 break, but uh, you should look for activity and go for the principle of offense being the best defense. So after d5, instead of stopping white's ideas, you should push through your own with f5. Uh, the general rule in most closed center positions, especially King's Indian type setups, is that once your opponent plays f5, you take it. Uh, usually that's the correct thing to do. Advancing would lead to problems on the king's side and uh, taking would... I mean, it would give you a strong square for the knight, but it would give black a very strong pawn, which would be hard to control. So after f5, ef5, gf5, once again black recaptures towards the center, uh, creating this solid pawn chain, uh, typical for the king's Indian defense. Leaving white with the option of checking the king, which is taken, queen h5 check, king f8, not a big deal. Uh, g3, preparing to fianchetto or to play bishop to h3, which is a more common idea. Queen to e8, try to exchange the queens, queen d1, d1 declining, knight f6, and play continues from here. Um, whether this is the best way for white to play is arguable. Um, I don't think it, it is, so the move d5 is fine and these positions are okay, but I think that the move knight to f3 should be played instead of that. So after knight c3, e5, you have the option of d5, which leaves black with a clear chance to play f5 as soon as possible, immediately, in fact. So you are giving black uh, enough counterplay and giving him a favorable king's Indian. Instead of that, instead of that knight to f3 should be your move of choice. and. This is basically the main line of the Averbach system, and this is the only true Averbach system. And we are going to look at one game, uh, Karpov uh, versus Seiravan, in which Yasser Seiravan managed to defeat Anatoly Karpov with, with this system, with the black pieces. So after knight to f3, uh, black continues with knight to c6, and if you remember the last position we were looking at, the cut variation, the bishop went to e3. In this position, the bishop is going to g5, as I said, provoking the move f6. Uh, so bishop to g5 f6 and now the bishop retreats uh, provoking the f6 weakness uh, isn't such a big deal but you are weakening the light squares and uh, black is going to have to waste the tempo on uh, on f5 anyway so it's a fine move i mean if you want to develop your bishop to e3 immediately then the 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 pawn would have still been on f7 so it might be better to have the pawn on f6 uh, but let's go back just for a second after the move knight to f3 the main move in the Averbach system black doesn't have to continue with knight to c6 there is another move after knight to f3 uh, black can continue with e takes d4 uh, leaving white with the Moroxi bind pawn structure and with a bad bishop on f1, so knight takes d4, knight c6, bishop to e3, uh, knight g to e7, bishop to e2, castles, castles, f5. Once again, black, black goes for the f5 break. And in this position, uh, white doesn't have that much central control, and this is why I think this is the best way for black to face the Averbach system. So after knight to c3, play e5, the most active move. You don't have to be afraid of the trades. The move d5 is met with f5 immediately. So after e5, white should continue with knight to f3. And now you can either play knight c6 or you can play e d4, which I would recommend. e takes d4, knight takes d4, knight c6, bishop e3, knight g7, bishop e2, castles, castles, f5. Once again, when your opponent plays f5, you take it e takes f5. In this position it would be too scary to take with the g-pawn and you no longer have uh, a pawn on e5, so you take with the bishop. Bishop takes d4, knight takes f5, bishop to e3, takes, takes, white has a ruined pawn structure, black has all of his pieces very active and I think this is actually good for black. I, I would rather have black in this position. White has a structural weakness on e3, Black has a, a great knight, uh, which has a permanent outpost on the e5 square. White has a wonderful bishop, which can come 
into f5 if uh, black i'm sorry has a wonderful bishop which can come into f5 and black has the file i mean he can exchange and uh, he could fight for the file so nothing major but black has definitely equalized and even the engines agree so let's go over that once again this is what i would recommend as, as the best line for black let's just flip the board so g6 the modern defense d4 bishop g7 c4 d6 knight c3 the Auerbach system play e5 don't be afraid of d5 and the queen exchange don't be afraid of d5 because you play f5 uh, knight to f3 is going to be played and now ed4 knight d4 knight c6 provoking the knight if white takes you have no problems because you are controlling the key square on d5 not allowing black to enter white is going to continue with bishop e3 knight g7 continue developing bishop to e2 both sides castle play f5 white is going to have to take if he doesn't take then this advance is very scary e5 bishop d4 knight d4 knight f5 bishop b3 knight e3 f3 a great position for black if you instead uh, decide to continue with move knight c6 this is slightly less active white has the move bishop g5 provoking f6 bishop e3 knight h6 you're looking at the g4 square and now white can continue with d5 d5 queen takes d8 king takes d8 castles you have the end game once again but uh, I don't think it's as good. Firstly, white has much more control over the d4 square. He has three pieces looking at d4 and soon to have a fourth if he wishes to. Your knight is uh, sort of blocking the c6 pawn and uh, it's going to be easy for white to jump into d5 and put pressure on f6 on c7. So I don't think this line is as good. Uh, I'm going to show you one game uh, from this position. <clears throat> So okay, the game is uh, the game is uh, Anatoly Karpov versus Yasser Seiravan, both great players. Yasser Seiravan, obviously, the most famous Pirts defense player uh, and the modern defense player by transposition. Sometimes uh, this game was played in 1992. So we have d6. Let's flip the board. Let's look at the game from Yasser Seiravan's perspective. Knight f3, g6, c4, bishop g7, knight c3 e5 seiravan obviously goes for the most active continuation uh e4 e4, uh, e4 knight c6 and we have the this position by transposition it started as a queen spawn but now we have the position we were looking at here after the move knight to c6 and e5 uh, we have uh, this position and uh, this is now the same so after the move knight to c6 uh, anatoly karpov did continue with bishop to g5 the main move provoking f6 bishop to e3 knight h6 this is exactly what we were looking at d5 d5 queen d8 king d8 castles and we have this end game which i don't think is favorable for black however yasser seiravan voluntarily went into this and managed to win the game uh, i'm not going to say that it was easy i'm not going to say that he won out of the opening or anything he managed to outmaneuver karpov but uh, i just wanted to prove that even the main line and this is the main line knight c6 is the main line is playable for black uh bishop to d7 covering the check is the main move and developing a piece h3 is i guess an okay move uh stopping knight to g4 but uh, i'm not sure whether there are better moves available after bishop to d7 uh, there have been 40 games with h3 and uh, one game with c5 in the live book so i guess knight to g4 has to be stopped in minds of grandmasters but there's another plan for this knight and i was wondering whether after h3 uh, it's just a waste of tempo and you can just three maneuver your knight back here and put pressure on both the pawns but however h3 king c8 uh, he wants to bring his rook to d8 and probably fianchetto, fianchetto his king c5 knight f7 and the knight does remaneuver itself but it doesn't have the d6 square anymore bishop c4 challenging the knight knight c to d8 defending and you can see that seiravan's pos position is sort of cramped and he doesn't have space and his pieces are inactive especially his rooks and uh, the engines give it as plus one for white so even though the position is playable and the engines don't really understand what it's like to play these positions i would still rather take white b4 a very aggressive continuation by anatoly karpov c6 stopping a further advance and as i said preventing the knight from entering d5 knight d2 
uh, the knight is now looking at a very weak square on d6 and if you can get a knight into d6 that would be the octopus knight and the end of the game so black is going to have to fight for control over the d6 square probably one of the best plans would be rook to e8 and then bishop to f8 looking at d6 bishop to e6 challenging the bishop uh, bishop e2 bishop h6 bishop takes knight takes knight c4 looking at the d6 square and if i were playing this position i would immediately take <laughs> and i would be too scared of knight d6 he played knight d to f7 controlling the square a4 i would also be uh Worried about this, I mean, why allow it? Uh, you are basically giving giving black the file, let's say you play this and then white can double up, it's it's scary. After knight d to f7, Karp continued with a4, uh, king c7, b5, rook a to d8, b6, check, king b8. And here, Seyravan equalized, because I think that b5, b6 was the wrong plan, but still, uh, I think Karpov should have played this position better. Obviously now uh, this square is free to use for black. Rook d4 takes it up immediately. Knight c2. Rook d1 check. Rook takes. Rook d8. King b2. f5. Uh, breaking open the queen side, the king side. a5. Knight g8. Rook takes. Knight takes. King a3. Knight f6. And now we are sort of in a minor piece uh, late middle game end game in which White's advantage is that he has the advanced pawns uh, on the on the queen side, and uh, Black's advantage is that he has a pawn majority on the king side. And I don't know. I think Black is starting to be better here. Let's uh, let's not continue. I'm just going to show you how the game ended. Here, Seiravan obviously outplayed Karpov and managed to get some pawns, and now this is just over. Uh, let's go over the opening once again. So the position after knight c6. So bishop g5, f6, bishop e3, knight h6, d5, d5, queen takes d8, king takes d8, castles, bishop d7, h3. Remember it as a thematic move, you want to stop knight to g4. King c8, you need to uh, take up the file with black and... I don't know, I just like the Averbach system for white, if, if this is the main line and one of the best ways for black to play, then poor black. Yeah, uh, look at some more games, you can find a lot of them in the databases, as I said, after the move h3, uh, there are still plenty plenty games to, to look at. And uh, black is scoring surprisingly well, uh, there's a game between Gawain Jones playing with the white pieces against Stargrims Steingrimson, an Icelandic player uh, from 2016 where black won as well, you should check that one out. There's a bunch of draws, but basically the position scores well for black even though it seems cramped and weird. Okay, uh, thanks very much for watching, I hope you liked this video on the Averbach system, remember all the lines, knight f6 and knight d7 lead to the king's indian, e5 should be your only move with the black pieces, knight c6 the quota variation should be avoided, and c6 and c5 aren't good, so I would recommend only the move e5, uh, and uh, I hope you liked it, hope you learn learned something, please let me know what you think, and uh, thanks very much, thanks very much for watching, stay tuned for more chess, see you later, bye bye.